Not long after Jane's death, the next highlight strikes with days of future past in 1981. For a very long time I thought it was inspired by the Terminator movie, but since it came out before that movie, it was probably the other way around. So this story is the first canon what if, where you see what would have happened if the bad guys had won. In this case it's the Sentinels, and the answer is a dystopia where mankind is enslaved to the machines because they all have the mutant gene. It was a super exciting event because it was the first time the bad guys had won and most of the good guys had been killed. Now obviously after seeing the same premise so many times since then, you come to realize it's just for shock, since when you can time travel to the past to undo negative consequences, nothing remains of all the evil things the bad guys have achieved. If there is a way to time reset any event you like, effectively retconning anything you don't like out of the continuity, there is no real gravity in anything the characters can do, since it can be undone at any moment. Later on they even retcon time travel to be the multiverse excuse so there can be a dimension with every possible outcome out there. On one hand it doesn't erase a timeline, it's always there, while at the same time it's stripping individuality and agency from the characters. Since there is an infinite number of them out there doing an infinite different things, it doesn't matter what they do or if they die, someone can replace them and life goes on. But I am pretty sure very few cared about that back then, and this event made the X-Men so popular the comic could continue doing the same crap without anyone noticing it. The main appeal was of course the character arcs that were given to every hero, usually based on a conflict that couldn't be punched into submission and Xavier couldn't mind control it to go away. With every X-Man having his own side story, sprinkled among random adventures, it was keeping the audience engaged for years, even if the actual events weren't that important in the long run. With that said, Marvel Comics have the bad habit of undoing most events that seem to be going somewhere, the writer changes, the trends no longer support what is going on, so there are going to be retcons that undo events that were building up for years. Most of these story arcs that kept the readers engaged are eventually proven to be pointless, because they don't lead anywhere. The reason I am saying all that is because up until days of future past you weren't getting that many excuses for the retcons. When the Inferno event happened in 1989, everything became harder to follow. I love Inferno for what is going on in it, but not for what happens to the characters. So in a nutshell, Mr. Sinister creates a clone of Jane and has her seducing Cyclops which says a lot about how shallow his attraction to Jane was in the first place if all he cares about is her looks, so he will knock her up and give birth to a superior mutant. Meanwhile, the original Jane comes back by retconning the one who died being a clone, again the clone excuse. Although this version doesn't have the Phoenix Force, she can still take it back from Rachel, who is her future child from the alternative timeline of Days of Future Past which means you can kill anyone you like there, it doesn't matter. And who, by the way, is not even the child the other clone gave birth to, that's an entirely different child! So when Jane comes back, instead of staying dead as she should have, Cyclops abandons the clone and goes back to the original, which says a lot about how shallow he is, blah blah blah, despite the former being left alone to raise his child, what an asshole! So the clone gets pissy about it, makes a deal with the devil and does a whole bunch of psionic and demonic shit that ends up with her death by the Phoenix Force. In effect, they killed Jane so there won't be an easy way to fix every problem and then they resurrected her and gave her back the very power they didn't want in the plot because it was broken. So what was the freaking point of her death? You ruined the whole point of the Dark Phoenix saga and you replaced it with clones of any character you kill just for shock while the original is still alive and well and can return whenever you feel like it. This is not good writing and it ruins the character drama of any story. The next big event was heavily based on that baby the clone gave birth to. A villain named Strife inflicted it with a powerful virus that had no cure at the time. So the X-Men hatched this ridiculous plan to send the baby in the far future, where a cure is possible, and it gets to be raised by clones of Cyclops and Jane. 
while in the future they made another freaking clone of the baby in case the original dies and that baby became Strife, the villain who went back in time to inflict the baby with the virus. So yeah, we have a weird time loop going on here. As for the original baby, it grew up to be Cable, one of the most badass characters at the time, who went back in time to stop Strife. Time travel shenanigans. Now, how the shit does any of that matter in the long run if it's just a time loop for the sake of getting a character and his evil clone in the present? Well, him coming back in time messed up with the timeline, again, the same way it got messed up during the events of Days of Future Past. A character named Bishop came from another alternative future, not the one Cable came from, a different one, to warn the X-Men about another dystopian future where the mutants are living in concentration camps. So yes, even without the Sentinels taking over, the mutants still get to be treated horribly. This will keep on happening for a few more times until the roles flip, and it's going to be the mutants who enslave the Homo sapiens. The future is fucked no matter what happens. So, how do they stop this second alternative timeline? Why, with the third alternative timeline! Where Xavier gets assassinated, when he normally shouldn't have, and without him around to ease the tensions, Apocalypse begins a holocaust. Like all future dystopias, it's very cool because the bad guys have won and the good guys no longer have plot armor. They can't be killed at any moment. And like all such events, time travel is once again the way through which they conveniently preserve the status quo. Very cool to read, while at the same time very disappointing with how they wrap things up. And sure, some of the characters from that timeline end up on present time, the same way Rachel ended up on present time from Days of Future Past. Some things carry over, but not nearly enough as there could have been. So what happens now that they stop the third alternative timeline? They have to deal with the cause of the second alternative timeline. By not assassinating Xavier, his dark side takes over and becomes Onslaught. This event was huge at the time, since it was crossing over with every other heroic team of Marvel. At the same time, it was artificial. It happened for the sake of discontinuing several comics that weren't selling as much at the period when the comic book crash happened in the real world, because of the oversaturation of comics and distribution shenanigans. So although the actual event is cool and the final battle is awesome, if you break it down, you see how it was slapped on as an excuse to mitigate the damage in real life than being properly introduced in the storyline. It also makes Xavier overpowered once again. The main improvement of the soft reboot was not letting Xavier being overpowered. And here they are breaking it for the sake of the plot to happen however they wanted. And that is why for most readers this is the point where most superheroic comic books decline and become a pile of shit.